Hello, I'm Sandra, and this IDM Byte is about data catalogs for large projects or consortia. If you have not already watched the other two IDM Bytes in this series, you may find them useful to watch, as using a data catalog within a research team covers the concepts of a data catalog, and the other IDM Byte covers data catalogs with different data types. By the end of this video, you will be able to design a single unified data catalog for the data sets from projects that feed some or all of their results to a consortium or overarching project. In a previous IDM Byte, we discussed in general the features of a data catalog, a key element being a searchable metadata inventory of a set of data assets. And in another, we discussed using metadata for transcriptomic and image data as additional metadata for the catalog. All these elements are useful to keep in mind when creating a data catalog for large projects. However, you may find there are pieces of information or data relating to the data sets that may better sit in another tab if using a spreadsheet format or link document if not. Remember, a data catalog is there to make your life easier by keeping a centralized record of your project's data assets, including information about these data sets that is useful during and after the lifetime of the project. In this RDM byte, we will cover study information and data dictionary for the catalog. A large project or consortium is often made up of several individual projects or possibly feeder projects, for example, earlier projects that preceded a newer project. In either case, it is useful to have details about these projects. These items listed were useful for me to collect on preceding projects that fed or partially fed into a newer larger project. It is really helpful to have this information easily at hand rather than to keep looking for them every time I reference these projects. It's worth checking with the PIs that the information particularly on funders is correct if this is something that you are recording. Earlier we mentioned the term data dictionary. What is a data dictionary? Data dictionaries can be considered the metadata of a data set or a data asset and should describe the valid content for each element of the data asset. On this slide you can see an example of a data dictionary. Data dictionaries are generally for individual data sets, but it may be the case that for your project, the metadata for each data set is the same, so the data dictionary could be shared across all the data sets. Ideally, when you receive a data set, a data dictionary should accompany it. For one of the projects I currently work on, the standard operating procedure for transferring data sets to the consortium insists that a data dictionary for the clinical data and the metadata for the transcriptomic data accompanies the data. This slide shows the data dictionary for a data catalog. Here we clearly define what each of the column or the metadata represents and what would be the valid responses in the data catalog. This is relatively straightforward to do and will save time when answering questions about the data catalog, especially for people not familiar with using the data catalog. In theory, this will answer most of their questions. Although it can be an effort and somewhat time consuming to get a data catalog started, it is really worth the effort. It can be considered a project output and can be published both on the project website or Zenodo. Try starting the data catalog before or when you start to receive the first data set. The metadata may change over time. It doesn't have to stay with the same columns that were in the first version. Coordinate with the team to find out what data sets are expected and when, and check with them that the metadata is a good representation of their data sets. Remember the data catalog will be particularly useful as people roll off the project and when the project ends. Having key information about the data sets collected in one place will save time for PIs and for project administrators. One project's data catalog may differ from another project. For example, one large consortium had many partners and data sharing agreements were different for each partner with the complication that some partners could see only partial elements of the data sets. By creating extra columns for each partner, I was able to show which partner had access to which data set or partial data set. 
Remember, there are, may be data sets included in the data catalog that may not be published or readily available due to sensitive data. In these cases, ensure there is a contact person listed. Thanks for watching. Please see the links used as well as links to additional resources alongside this video. I would also like to acknowledge the Cluster Consortium.